Okay, this is the P3 paper from October 2020. It's question number five. And as you can see, the first part is going to be proving a trig identity uh, using double angles. And the second part is going to be integrating using trig functions. So uh, let's make a start um, with the first part, part A. Says sine x, sorry, sine 3x is identical to 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x. And I would highly strongly recommend that you learn the proof for this. So this is almost just a memory test for you of how we do this one. Uh, so, yeah, what we do is we start off with the left-hand side. We start off with sine 3x and we just say, well, that's the same as sine 2x plus x. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the addition formula. So sine a plus b. A lot of these are um, written down in the formula booklet, a lot of the trig stuff, but I would suggest you try and learn as much as possible. So this one is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So if I'm doing that with sine 2x plus x then, sine 2x plus x, anywhere where there's an a you put 2x, anywhere where there's a b put x. So this is going to be sine 2x cos x plus cos 2x sine x. Now if you were doing this for the first time or you couldn't quite remember, um, look at what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to sine and sine cubed. So if I'm trying to get to sine and sine cubed, the first thing that I would do is I would see both of those two are double angle formulae that I can change. Sine 2x, I don't have a choice, so I might as well put that in straight away. We know that sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a. Uh, the cos 2a, I do have a choice. It's either cos squared a minus sine squared a. Not that useful, that one. 2 cos squared, whoops, sorry. 2 cos squared a minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And say, I'm just remembering all of these. I've not got a formula booklet in front of me. Really important that these are in your head. And going back to what we just said, because my answer up there is in terms of sines, I'm going to choose that one to be the one that I replace the cos 2a with. So that's explaining it all to you. I wouldn't put all of that down. I'd leave it just as, oops, just as this bit. Put those two together. So if I use those, then I now get equals sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x multiplied by my cos x, plus the cos 2x then I'm saying is one minus two sine squared x multiplied by sine. So if we tidy this up, uh, the first term is now two sine x cos squared x, and this other bit's getting close to what I want. One minus two sine squared x times sine x, is going to give me sine x minus 2 sine cubed x. So that's looking highly promising. This is the only bit that I don't really want to have in there. And again, one of our classic cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So cos squared is 1 minus sine squared. That has to be in your head, guys, if you're going to be anywhere near successful with this stuff. So I get 2 sine x times 1 minus sine squared x plus sine x minus 2 sine cubed x, really close to the answer now. Uh, multiplying that out gives me 2 sine x minus 2 sine cubed x plus sine x minus 2 sine cubed x, which then works out to be what we were hoping to get right at the start, which was 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x. So 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x, which then equals the right-hand side. 
So for part A, I'm quite happy then that we've got the answer. Part B, let's just get rid of that. Part B says, can we integrate sine cubed x, which means sine cubed x there, I'm gonna to need to rearrange my trig identity and then try and integrate it. So part B says, can we integrate between pi over three and naught sine cubed x dx. So the first thing I need to do is to say, if sine three x is identical to three sine x minus four sine cubed x, then I can get the, take that to the other side, four sine cubed x is equal to three sine x minus sine three x, which means that sine cubed x is a quarter of all of that. A quarter, three sine x minus sine three x. And so that's what I'm then going to be integrating. So the integral between pi over three and naught of sine cubed x dx, did I put the dx in? Yes, I did. Uh, it is equal to, let's take that quarter outside. I've got the integral between pi over three and naught of three sine x minus sine three x dx. And then if we're integrating these, as you can see, you know, we've gone quite a way down this question already. I'm not really gonna want to have to spend ages integrating these two bits. So we remember that the differential of sine is cos and the differential of cos is minus sine. If I remember those things, then if I want to integrate sine, Integrating up there is going to be minus three. So let's put the quarter in. It's going to be minus three cos x. So I'm explaining this to you. I'm not going to necessarily put this as part of my answer. I don't think I want all of that as part of my answer. It was just an explanation for you guys. And then if I had cos three x as my differential, the differential of cos 3x, differential of cos is minus sine, so that works out to be minus 3 sine 3x. So if I'm integrating using the reverse chain rule, then I think that the integral of minus sine 3x is simply a third cos 3x. Now, if you're struggling with that, you're gonna to need to go and look at a different video just on specifics of integrating and differentiating trig functions. At this stage, that really, it's not, not that it's straightforward, but it shouldn't be causing you too many problems when we're doing that. And now this just boils down now to uh, um, an issue of um, sticking pi over three in. So we've got a quarter, so it's minus three cos pi over three plus a third cos pi, because three lots of pi, pi over three, minus, and then a quarter, but just sticking naught in there, minus three cos naught, plus a third cos naught. And I always think it's worthwhile just doing those ones because it won't automatically work out to be equal to zero when we're integrating with the trig function, this, this term here I'm talking about, it won't automatically work out to be equal to zero. So just take a bit of time over sticking all of those values in. And then if you do put all those values in, I'm gonna take any time over this, uh, it actually comes out to be five over 24 as the final answer. Use your calculator um, to do that. And what does it say? Does it ask it as an active? No, it just says find it, but it works out to be um, an exact value there, 5 over 24. Okay, hopefully that makes sense.